Hi everyone, I'm Daniel Roth from the Blazor team. In this video, we're going to look at how you can customize the routes for your components and pages, and also how you can apply a common layout to all of your pages. So if we go back to our project, we've already learned that you can make a component a routable component, make it a page, by applying the page razor directive to the top of the component. And this assigns that component a route. So our counter component has the slash counter route. And if we go and uh, look at the app, the running application, sure enough, slash counter is where that page is being rendered from. Okay? Now we can uh, customize those routes in different ways to control how, our, uh, how and where our pages uh, get rendered. For example, you don't just have to have a single route for your components. You can have multiple. Uh, let's add another route to our counter. So we'll just add another page uh, directive, and this one we'll put slash counter to. Now when we're changing the routes for our components, uh, often the .NET Watch struggles with that a little bit. So I'm actually going to do a little gesture with .NET Watch to tell it, hey, go ahead and restart the app so that you pick up my, my new route. And the way you can do that is just by hitting Control-R. So I'm just telling it to go ahead and rebuild and restart the app. All right, there it goes. And so now if we go to our, our browser, we see that uh, let's refresh on slash counter. Is it still there? Yes, and it's still working. And now if we browse to slash counter 2, Ah, we also get a counter at slash counter too, so that's working as well. So we've added another route uh, for our counter component. Great. Okay. Uh, what else can we do? Well, you can also um, have uh, route parameters, like parts of the route that you want to capture and then pass as a component parameter uh, to your component. For example, let's take this slash counter route. And let's say we want to have a parameter for this path segment, you know, path segment after slash counter that lets us spe uh, specify the initial count for the, the, the counter. Okay? So we're going to add this route parameter. And then we need to then bind that to a component parameter. So down here in my code block, I'm going to add a component parameter. So we'll add the parameter attribute, and we'll define a property that has the same name uh, oh, uh, yeah, initial count as the uh, route parameter that we just defined. So these will match based on name. Um, actually, I want this to be capitalized because it's a, a property, and it will match a uh, case insensitive. Now, notice I've defined this property as a string. Uh, that's because values that you get out of the route, well, routes are just URLs, so they're just strings. So we're going to be getting, getting string content uh, from the, uh, the, the route parameters. Okay? Uh, let's use speci let's just render the value of that uh, initial count someplace so we know what's happening. So initial count equals, and then we'll render the value of initial count. That at symbol is how we transition from HTML to C sharp. Okay, good. So let's see what happens. Let's go back to the well. Let's give uh, .dotnet watch a little nudge so it knows to pick up the new routes. So it's going to restart the app. Hit Control R. And let's go back to the running application. OK, so do I still get counter 2? Yes, counter 2 is still there. Can I now browse to slash counter slash like 1, 2, 3? And I can. So we've just picked up that 1, 2, 3 path segment, and it's now being bound to our component parameter, and we were able to, to render it on the page. Great. Now what about just going to slash counter? Can I still do that? Oh, hmm. OK, now I get a 404. This is a route that the web app is telling me it doesn't actually have an endpoint. Uh, why is that? What happened to our slash counter route? Well, when we added that route parameter, that route parameter became a required part of the component's route. We have to have an additional path segment for it to, uh, to match. Uh, we can make the, this path segment optional by adding a question mark at the end. That says, you know what? This route parameter doesn't have to be there. If it's not there, you can still match. Okay, So let's go ahead and Hit Control R again to restart our application, and then let's go back and see if we can get back to counter one, two, three. We can. What if we just go to slash counter? Ah, okay, good. That's working again. And of course, we don't have an initial count uh, because um, we don't we don't have that path segment in our route. Okay, good. Now, if I try to go to something other than a number like slash ABC, 
OK, well, that will match as well. That's also a, a path segment, and it's just a string, and so we're getting that uh, as well. We, now, if we want to specify the initial count for our counter, that should be a number. So we don't want to match just random strings. How can we deal with that? Well, we can add route constraints to our route parameters. The way you add a route constraint is just by adding a colon, and then the name of the route constraint that you want to add. In this case, I'm going to use the int route constraint, which says that, you know what? this route parameter should always be a number, should always be an integer specifically, but it is optional. It doesn't actually have to be there. And by doing that, I can now change my route parameter. Instead of it being a string, I'm going to change it to be an int as well so that those will, will bind correctly. Now, I haven't actually done anything with this initial count yet other than like um, render it to the screen. So let's also add a little bit of code up here to override the oninitialized method. You may remember this from uh, one of the earlier videos. OnInitialize is a special Blazor uh, component lifecycle method that's called uh, right after the component is created so that you can initialize the component state. So I want to initialize the current count to be the initial count, just like that. OK? And now we should go ahead and uh, tell .NET Watch to restart. There it goes. And let's see if that is now working. So if I go back to slash counter, slash counter is working. We've got our initial count, and it's zero. All right, so that's working. What if we now try to browse to slash like one, two, three? Aha, so the initial count it did get bound, and also the current count is starting at one, two, three. And if I click the button, we increment from, from there. And if is that route constraint now working? Like if I browse to slash ABC, I get a 404. And that's what we want. Like we don't want to match the route when we just have random letters for the uh, initial count. That wouldn't make sense. OK? So that's how you can uh, add additional routes to your uh, Blazor components, you know, get parameter values out of those, those routes, uh, and then add constraints and make uh, route parameters optional. Now, where, where does that routing actually happen in a Blazor web application? Well, it's actually handled by another component, by the Blazor router component. And we can see that in the, in the app code. If we look in this routes.razor file, this is a component that's in our, 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 our project, in our app. And here we can see the built-in Blazor router is being used and being set up so that it can take care of discovering all the routable components in my application, figuring out what route parameters they have, and then feeding that information along so that that page can then be rendered with those uh, route, route parameters. Okay? So that's what the Blazor router component does, and it's usually already set up for you in the, well, when you create your Blazor web app project. The routes component, this routes.razor file, that's being used from app.razor. App.razor is the root component for our Blazor web app. This is the first component that actually renders in response to any, re any request that comes to our Blazor web application. And we can see that it's the one that's actually setting up the root HTML document that's being rendered. It's calling that routes component to set up the Blazor router. It's also adding the Blazor framework script, which uh, enables all sorts of cool client-side functionality for your Blazor web app. Okay, so there's your root component. That's where things are kind of starting. It's the, the parent of all the other uh, components. Now, going back to the web app, you may have noticed that there's quite a bit going on with each of these pages other than just the page content. Like we have this left uh, nav menu that, that we can use to click on different pages. And there's this top row. Like, where is all of that coming from? It's obviously not in our pages. Well, that is all layout. Uh, Blazor supports layouts. Layouts are a way to define common content that wraps all of your pages. And the way you build layouts in Blazor is, of course, with components. You build a layout component. Let's go find the layout for our Blazor web app. Let's go back to the code. So the layout um, components are in this layout folder. We've got main layout, and there's that, na that nav menu. Let's look at main layout.razor. And we, the, the thing that's special about a layout component is that it inherits, you see this up here, it inherits from layout component base. So this is just like you know, class inheritance, like the, the class that is being built from main layout.razor, the C-sharp class, will actually inherit from that, that base class, layout component base. 
What does that do? Well, it adds this body property that you can then use. You can just render the body property using the at syntax to say, you know what, the page content should go here. And I want to wrap that page content with everything else. Like all this other stuff is going to go around the, the page. So that's how you build a, a layout in Blazor by defining a component that inherits from layout component base. Up top, you can see that's where the nav menu is being uh, set up. The nav menu is just another custom component that's defined in the, the sample code in the Blazor project. Let's go take a look at that. Here's nav menu. It's pretty much all just standard HTML. The only thing that's a little fancy about it is it's using this nav link component. What is that? Well, nav link is a built-in component in Blazor that just renders an anchor tag. Uh, the only additional thing it adds is if the browser URL matches the anchor tag link, then it will um, the nav link component will add a CSS class to, to the anchor tag. It'll add like active. And we, we can see that in the app. Let's go back to the application. You see how in the nav link, whenever I click on home, counter, or weather, it kind of gets highlighted because that's the active page. If we look in the browser dev tools and let's inspect like this weather tab, we can see sure enough. There's an anchor tag that got rendered by the nav link, and it has this extra active CSS class that then you can use you know, normal CSS style rules in order to style however you like. So that's all nav link is. It's really just an anchor tag with that one little you know, extra, extra feature. All right, so that's how you build a layout. How do you then apply it to your pages? Well, the easiest way to do that is actually using the Blazor router. If we go back to routes.razor, here's our Blazor router. Over here, you can see that the Blazor router is setting up, I um, it's easier if I do it this way, it's setting up a default layout for every page that it renders. It will just automatically apply the main layout component that we, we saw earlier. So that's setting up a default layout for your app. That's one way you can do it. The other way you can do it is um, you can apply a layout to a specific page. Like let's say for on the home page, we want to apply a layout just for this one page. We can do that by using the at layout razor directive. And then here you specify the layout that you want to use. Like if I wanted to use main layout on the home page, that's how I would do it. Of course, that won't change anything because it's already using that layout as the default layout. But we could then create a different layout that just applies to this one page, and that would work too. All right. So that's how in Blazor you can customize the routes for your various uh, Blazor, routable Blazor components for your pages, and also define layouts uh, that are, can be used by all of your pages by default or by specific pages.